This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University, and today I want to talk about the new crypto bill, what's in it, what's not, and whether it's good or bad for Bitcoin. This is a bill that was just introduced to Congress by Senator Lummis from Wyoming and Senator Gillibrand from New York. Senator Gillibrand's a Democrat, Senator Lummis is a Republican, so this is a bill that has clear bipartisan support, which in itself is very encouraging and very interesting to see because there's not much that the two, party, two parties can agree on, uh, but this is one of the things that they can agree on. Before I talk about this, I should point out that you, you should expect many small or large changes to this bill before it reaches its final form and becomes law. There may be other bills that are proposed instead and other bills that are merged with this bill. This bill must make its way through a number of committees, committees and there will probably be some public hearings as well. I'm going to link to the overview that Senator Lummis and Senator Gillibrand have provided. It's a six-page overview, and I'm just going to be touching on some of the points today, the most important points. One of the most exciting ones is that if this bill becomes law, you will be able to spend up to $2 worth of Bitcoin or other cryptocurrency on something, on goods and services, and pay zero capital gains taxes on that transaction, even if you have a fiat profit on that Bitcoin. Up until this point, even today, technically, if you buy a cup of coffee with Bitcoin and that Bitcoin has appreciated in U.S. dollar or other fiat terms, you owe capital gains taxes. This is obviously something that's very difficult to enforce, and so I wouldn't worry about it if you've spent $5 on the Lightning Network or something and haven't paid your taxes. Again, you should always pay your taxes, uh, but this is something that's going to make it much easier to spend your Bitcoin. These will have to be separate transactions. So for example, you can't pay $200 300 times to buy a $60,000 car. That This capital gains ex exclusion will not apply in that case. But as I said, buying a cup of coffee with Bitcoin will no longer be a taxable event. Again, you have to spend it on goods or services. You can't buy securities or buy cash with Bitcoin and not have it be taxed. But this will do quite a bit for Bitcoin in terms of its adoption in the real economy. This $200 exclusion should obviously be much higher. It should have been $600 or $10,000 or basically infinite, but at least it's a start. I also think that they should add some language into this bill that would adjust this $200 exclusion for CPI inflation. If we're going to continue to have 8 or 9% CPI inflation, it's important that this $200 is adjusted upwards as well. And it's very common in government law to have CPI adjustments. Adjustments. It's interesting to see here that this is the beginning of Bitcoin being being treated as money by regulators and legislators. When you buy something with US dollars or euros or yen or Australian dollars, you never pay capital gains taxes on it based on its exchange rate with other some other fiat currency because money is not is not taxed in the same way. Interest income is taxed, capital gains are taxed, but this is beginning to treat Bitcoin like any other kind of money, which is exciting to see. Another thing in this bill that's interesting is that there's, ex there's a specific language that states that digital lending agreements are not taxable events. In other words, you'll be able to borrow against your Bitcoin and not trigger any capital gains taxes. This was already pretty clear, but this law will make sure that this is enshrined in law. And this is huge. It confirms what I've been saying for the last few years, that you're never going to need to sell your Bitcoin. You'll be able to borrow against it to buy a house or to otherwise pay your bills, and you won't have a capital gains tax as part of that. Also, because of that first part of the bill, you'll also be able to spend up to $200 on gas or groceries or goods and services as well and not pay capital gains tax. If you want to learn more about how a loan against Bitcoin might work, you can check out this video, which I will link to below, The Ultimate Guide to Bitcoin Loans. And while you're there, I'd ask if you if you hit the subscribe and like button, especially if you're enjoying the current video. Another provision in this bill is that Bitcoin miners in the U.S. will no longer owe taxes on Bitcoin mining rewards on the 6.25 Bitcoin that they earn per block plus the transaction fees. In other words, they will not owe capital gains taxes on this Bitcoin or, or income taxes until they convert that Bitcoin to fiat, until they sell it for fiat. So I think that is a very fair thing to do. For example, example, if you're a gold mining company, you don't pay taxes when you pull the gold out of the ground. You only pay taxes when you convert it to 
US dollars or other fiat currencies. Another thing that's been added is something that will reverse what was put into last fall's infrastructure bill. This is that Bitcoin miners will no longer fall under this broker category, which was a big mess being being grouped with other other brokers and having to provide a lot of detailed records about the transactions that they are mining in each block, which was completely uh, completely impractical. So that's going to remedy the bad language in last fall's infrastructure bill. Next, uh, and I think one of the most important parts of this bill is the discussion of how digital assets are going to be classified and regulated. This has been an ongoing discussion in the U.S. and other countries. Are Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, are they securities? Are they commodities? Are they some other uh, form of digital assets that has its own tax and regulatory treatment? The way this bill approaches it is very interesting. I don't think it's extremely satisfying, but let me explain how it works. Traditionally, if a digital asset passes the Howey test, in other words, if it's an investment of money in a common enterprise with the expectation of profit to be, to be derived from the efforts of others, and this is a very old, uh, this is a law from the, uh, from the it's, a, it's a securities test from, the I believe, the 1950s. It was originally applied, I think, to a pear orchard to decide whether investing in this, this fruit orchard was an investment contract or not. But if you, if you don't want to be classified as a security, you want to fail the Howey test. It's unlike other tests where you really want to fail it, as Gary Gensler pointed out in one of his lectures. So this is traditionally how it worked. And this is how the SEC was able to sue Ripple for issuing unregistered securities, in other words, issuing XRP and without registering it. And Ripple and XRP are a clear example of a centralized entity that's profiting from a digital asset that they issued and that they they sold to retail investors without registering it. Bitcoin has traditionally been treated as a commodity in the U.S. under the Commodity Exchange Act, as we can see from this 2018 uh, 2018 document. Ethereum, there's been a lot of debate whether it's a commodity or a security. This is not a debate that, um, this is a debate that's been had among legislators and regulators. It's very clear that Ethereum is a security. It was issued by a centralized group of people. And I can, uh, I'll link to a, uh, a video here that does a very good job of showing why, uh, why Ethereum uh, f uh, why Ethereum passes the Howey test and should be regulated as, regulated as an Ether as a uh, as a uh, security, it's a little bit uh, di different in this in this bill. So over the last few years, we've had Bitcoin as a digital commodity. It's been there's been this debate about Ethereum whether it's a commodity or security, and then everything else was really broadly considered unregistered securities, and the SEC has been in the process of going after various companies for this. This new bill, the Lummis Gillibrand, Hillibrand, uh, Gillibrand bill, creates a new weird asset class called ancillary assets. And the way it defines it is this, digital assets which are not fully decentralized and which benefit from entrepreneurial and managerial efforts that determine the value of the assets but do not represent securities because they are not debt or equity or do not create rights to profits, liquidation preferences, or other financial interests in a business entity. These are things that securities uh, generally look like, and this is what the Howey test is intended to test for. Even under this definition, I would say that Ethereum is clearly an ancillary asset. It's not fully decentralized, and it does have these centralized actors like Vitalik Buterin and Joe Lubin, who have a huge role to play in whether Ethereum ends up succeeding or not. And so Ethereum would definitely fall under this ancillary asset bucket Bitcoin certainly would not because there's no there's no centralized corporation or foundation in charge of it. Now, if something is is classified as an ancillary asset under this new bill, if it becomes law, they will be required to furnish disclosures with the SEC twice a year. So Ethereum and Vitalik will have to file these reports with the SEC, which will be pretty funny to watch. These if if they if they do this, if all these cryptocurrencies file these biannual reports with the SEC, they will be considered in compliance. And then because they have fulfilled these disclosure requirements, they will be presumed to be commodities. This is a weird thing. They have to report to the SEC, but then assuming they do this well and they haven't become uh, even more centralized, then they will be presumed to be a commodity, 
which would mean that they fall under regulation by the CFTC. The CFTC stands for Commodity Futures Trading Commission. They're the regulator that regulates the futures exchanges, for example. So this bill would effectively put the top 100 cryptocurrencies under the CFTC as a start. And then it would be up to the SEC or anyone else to sue and try to pick them off one by one and prove that they are securities and that they're not, uh, prove that they don't fail, uh, that they do not fail the Howey test. So this is a strange thing. Again, I'll link to this discussion of what a security is and how uh, this quotes a lot of statements from Vitalik Buterin demonstrating that Ethereum is clearly a security. So it remains to be seen how this all plays out, but this is one approach to it. There's also a section of this bill called Termination of Disclosure Requirements, which establishes a clear procedure for ancillary assets, which we just defined, which have become fully decentralized uh, to, to conclude providing disclosure. So in other words, if you have this token or this cryptocurrency that used to be pretty centralized and it becomes completely fully decentralized, it won't have to do these biannual reports to the SEC and it will remain a commodity. This is sort of an unnecessary paragraph in my opinion. It's nice to have, but this is something that will never happen again. It's no longer possible to, to move a cryptocurrency project from being fully centralized to fully decentralized. The problem is you always have these pre-mines, you have insiders who control the monetary policy, they control the development, and they control the, the, uh, the, the tokens, and it's very difficult to change broken incentives that are broken from the start. As I've said many times on this channel, Bitcoin had an immaculate conception. It's a once in human history occurrence. You can only do this sort of thing once, then everyone knows the game, and they try to game it for their own profit. People like Do Kwan and Vitalik Buterin. The market is beginning to understand this, and it's beginning to price in that Bitcoin is special, especially since this law, this bill has been proposed. Bitcoin has been appreciating against every other crypto, especially Ethereum and DeFi tokens. This is a very important cross, uh, FX cross to watch, the Ethereum Bitcoin cross. As this chart moves down, that means Bitcoin is strengthening against Ethereum. As it moves up, it means Ethereum is strengthening against Bitcoin. And we've seen a flight to safety in this crypto bear market and in this stock bear market into Bitcoin and away from securities and away from cryptocurrencies like Ethereum and other cryptos that might be construed to be securities or ancillary assets in this weird bucket. So what's the bottom line? Bottom line is I do not think that this bill is nearly good enough. I'm actually disappointed by it. I think it's really important to understand and to make sure the public understands that Bitcoin is in a class of its own. And I know, Sen I know Senator Lummis understands this, but I wish she would do better than this. Obviously, she's trying to work on a bipartisan deal here. She's trying to make a lot of different parties uh, parties happy. But I think this bill could be done in a much better way. Maybe she has this, these, these classifications like ancillary assets as a negotiating tactic, and then she can give or take something away. Uh, she's a much better politician than I would ever be. But if you cut through this, you uh, I think you'll be disappointed because Bitcoin really is this completely unique asset. Everyone knows it. Senator Lummis knows it. Head of the SEC, Gary Gensler, knows it, as we know from his course, which he taught his public course, which he taught at MIT. So what I would suggest to Senator Lummis and Sen Senator uh, Hillebrand is to keep Bitcoin in its own bucket and give everything else over to the SEC. Just let them have it. I'm not a huge fan of the SEC, but this is the regulatory framework we have. Let the SEC put handcuffs on all of these unregistered securities. Forget about ancillary assets. Everything except Bitcoin is an unregistered security, including Cardano, XRP, Ethereum, Solana, etc. The other problem with this bill is it contains a lot of potential loopholes depending on who gets to decide if a project or cryptocurrency or digital asset is decentralized. Has something been centralized and has it moved and become full to fully decentralized? Who exactly gets to define this and decide it? It's a huge loophole. And it's much better to just, to just realize and point out that only Bitcoin has this decentralization. Nothing else is ever going to get there. And so it should be decided from the start. If you, put law, if you put words like this in a bill, what will happen is it will create loopholes. There's only one truly decentralized digital asset today. And in 200 years, there's still only going to be one truly decentralized digital asset, which is Bitcoin. The problem with this decentralized language loophole is we're going to get 
groups like Andreessen Horowitz, the venture capital firm, which has backed a lot of uh, altcoin projects, they may get to advise regulators about what is decentralized and what is not. So I would I would take this sort of language out from the beginning. Don't allow it to become a loophole. The final problem is, and this is a problem just in general with general with regulation. All the regulators are so bad. They're very stupid. They have very bad incentives. They go and work for private companies after they're done being regulators. The problem with this is we're handing Bitcoin over to a hostile CFTC, Commodity Futures Trading Commission. Now, Bitcoin has been roughly, uh, roughly regulated by the CFTC for a few years now, but this would make it much more explicit. And we currently have a head of the CFTC, the current CFTC chair, is saying that Bitcoin uses too much energy and it needs to change its energy policy and presumably move from proof of work to proof of stake. This is uh, completely out of line. The CFTC doesn't, uh, the chair doesn't comment that it, it requires energy to mine gold or to mine oil, which whose future contracts also trade in the U.S. under the CFTC on futures exchanges. But for some reason, uh, this guy is hostile to Bitcoin and its proof of work. Someone pointed this out to Cynthia Lomas on Twitter, and she says uh, Bitcoin is a commodity. This is her response to the tweet. And the CFT CFTC is definitionally where commodities are regulated. This comment by the F, uh, CF, CFTC chair reveals a lack of understanding of proof of work. Lots of education is needed, etc. So I don't know really where you... I would prefer if Bitcoin just remains completely unregulated. I know there, there's no chance that that's going to happen. Um, and perhaps the CFTC is the best place for it to end up. But if this is handled wrong, it's not going to hurt Bitcoin, but it is going to hurt the U.S., in terms of its advantage as a superpower and a place that is friendly to Bitcoin miners and Bitcoiners. So I think it's important to get it right. If the U.S. messes this up, there will be countries, there will be smart countries like El Salvador that do a better job of understanding it. So perhaps the CFTC is the best place to put this. I prefer if uh, if Bitcoin sort of slipped through the cracks and was more like gold, where you don't really have a special group, government group, uh, regulating it. And it's this neutral uh, digital commodity instead. So those are my thoughts on the bill. I'm glad this discussion is happening. And it's really amazing to see Congress tackling things like Bitcoin. Bitcoin has become big enough that the world cannot ignore it. So in many ways, this is Bitcoin continuing to win. But I hope the U.S. makes the right legislative and regulatory decisions to make the U.S., the land of the free and the home of the brave, a good home for Bitcoin as well. Otherwise, it's the U.S. that fails and Bitcoin wins, and it wins in other jurisdictions, not the U.S. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.